contemporary sound. Composed with counter deadness. And filled with composed emotions. Experimental wind. Curiously howling. Parastratless. And astro menstruous perhaps structured as astromensis as Weben's five pieces for orchestra or Bologna's metal lily. in its puzzled intervals, as opposed to the polyinterrable omnitiming of stochastic pulses. Sound waves crashing onto a shoreless tide. Sassur confronts the system of the spoken language with a system of contemporary sound. Phonetic and even alphabetic writing as though with a telos of writing uncomposed heavenly and Harsh. This teleology leads to the interpretation of all eruptions of the non-phonetic within writing as transitory crises and accident of passage. And it is right to consider this teleology to be a Western ethnocentrism. 
a pre-mathematical primitivism and a pre-formalist intuitionism. Even if this teleology responds to some absolute necessity, it should be problematized as such. As rumbling sign tones? Is it the same as glorious white noise and chilling aquamarine noise in an intraceedable polyphonic relationship? A tideless shore vocalized. The scandal of usurpation invites us expressly and intrinsically to do that. How was the trap and the usurpation possible? Saussure never replies to this question beyond the psychology of the passions or of the imagination. A psychology reduced to its most conventional diagrams. This best explains why all linguistics, a determined sector inside semiology, is placed under the authority and superiority of psychology. To determine the exact place of semiology is the task of the psychologist. Can music be expressed through verbal language? existing as verbal language or existing as text. The affirmation of the essential and natural bond between the phone and the sense, the privilege accorded to an order of signifier, depend expressly and in contradiction to the other levels of Sussurian discourse. Upon a psychology of consciousness, an intuitive consciousness. What Saussure does not question here is the essential possibility of non-intuition. Like Husserl, 
The seer determines his non-intuition, teleologically, as crisis. The empty symbolism of the written notation in mathematical technique, for example, is also for Husserlian intuitionism, that which excels as far from the clear evidence of the fits, that is to say, from the full lessons of the signified in its truth, and thus opens the possibility of crisis. This is indeed a crisis of the Logos. Nevertheless, for Husserl, this possibility remains linked with the very moment of truth and the production of ideal objectivity. It has, in fact, an essential need for writing. aspect of this text, Husserl makes us think that the negativity of the crisis is not a mere accident. But it is then the concept of crisis that should be are precisely no longer within the province of psychology. Psychology will never be able to accommodate within its space that which constitutes the absence of the signatory, to say nothing of the absence of the referent. Right is the name of these two absences. Besides, is it not contradictory to what elsewhere affirmed about language, having a definite and far more stable oral tradition that is independent of right to explain the usurpation by means of writing's power of duration, by means of the durability of the substance of writing? If these two stabilities were of the same nature, and if the stability of the spoken language were independent, the original writing is distinct and both are an inexplicable mystery. It seems that as it is. Nature is affected from without by an overturning which modifies it in its interior, denatures it, and obliges it to be separated from itself. 
nature, denaturing itself, being separated from itself, naturally gathering its outside into its inside. This catastrophe, a natural event that overthrows nature, or monstrosity, a natural deviation within nature. The function is soon in Rousseau's discourse by the catastrophe. We see it delegated to monstrousness. Rousseau's text on pronunciation. Experimental wind, curiously howling, parastratus and astro Structured as astromancers as wave and five pieces for orchestra or bronies metal lilies in its puzzled interval. Opposed to the poorly interrupted omni timing of stochastic pulses, smooth. Crashing onto a shoreless 
Contemporary sound uncomposed. Heavenly and harsh. Is it the same as rumbling signposts? Formidable hydro rods, semisectable demo plots, pig minted. Soaked modulations. But the tyranny of writing goes even further by imposing itself upon the masses, spelling influences and modifies language. This happens only in highly literary languages where written texts play an important role. Then visual images lead to wrong pronunciations. Such mistakes are really pathological. Spelling practices cause mistakes in the pronunciation of many French words. For instance, there were two spellings for the surname Lefebvre. One popular and simple, the other learned and etymological. Lefebvre and Lefebvre because V and U 
were not kept apart in the old system of writing. Lefebvre was read as Lefebvre, <laughs> with a B that has never really existed, and a U that was a result of ambiguity. Now the latter form is actually pronounced. <laughs> Where is the evil? One will perhaps ask. And what has been invested in the living word that makes such aggressions of writing intolerable. What invest investment begins by determining the constant action of writing as a deformation and an aggression? But prohibition has not been transgressed. Where is the sacrilege? Why should the mother tongue be protected from the operation of writing? Why determine that operation as violence? And why should the transformation be only a deformation? Why should the mother tongue not have a history? Or what comes to the same thing? produce its own history in a perfectly natural, artistic, and domestic way without ever being affected by any outside. Why wish to punish writing for a monstrous crime to the point of wanting to reserve for it even within scientific treatments. A special compartment that holds it at a distance. For it is indeed within a sort of intralinguistic leper colony that Saussure wants to contain and concentrate the problem of deformations through writing. And in order to be convinced that he would take in very broad part, the innocent question that I have just asked. For after all, Lefebure is not a bad name. <laughs> And we can love the play. The following quote explains to us that the play is not natural and its accents are pessimistic. <laughs> 